Hey, hey, hey. What's up, everybody? Hope everyone's doing well. Gonna have a special guest today, Patrick Bruzil. He's awesome. He's a local realtor. Funny, super funny guy. Uh, he's gonna join me at one o'clock. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk about the NAR settlement, the lawsuit that was settled uh, between uh, the NAR and the attorneys. Uh, break down kind of like the verdict, the 400 million, so what it means, uh, where is some of that money going, and how is the industry being changed? Uh, why is that important? It's super important because it impacts buyers, sellers, pretty much everyone in the industry, right? Because the way that I see it is if one if one commission is, is, is being impacted, all the other uh, fee structures and commissions can be impacted. So maybe we'll see next how attorneys uh, get paid is impacted or how lenders, even though lenders are very well regulated, uh, I think, you know, it, it's not just real estate agents. Uh, you know, I, I think it, it's it's much bigger. So I think I have the man of the hour here, Patrick Bruzil. I hope you guys uh Patrick. Um here he is waiting for him to join. There you hey, go. Hey what's man, up? If I'm the man of the hour we're in trouble. <laughs> How you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm so glad we're doing this finally. I, I am too. I'm uh, I'm excited to hear just some of your thoughts on everything. It's crazy reactions from like the. I don't think there's anyone in the U.S. that isn't somehow touched by the news, at least mm -hmm. um, from the sense that look, everyone's got to live somewhere. Um, everyone say roots. Hi, 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 hi. We're live. Everyone's got to live somewhere. Um, yep. Everyone, you, you know, whether you own, whether you rent, whether you're going to sell, whether you're going to buy, whether you work in the industry or not, I think there's so many opinions about housing. Um, so the reactions from lay people to people in the industry to reporters to journalists yeah. to economists is is wild. Um, it's well, uh, it's it's staggering. I I, I saw that. That, that post you did today about the New York Times journalist, right? Which probably is not even an expert in real estate, but what she's saying, which blows your mind, it's like you're gonna pay less in commissions somehow, and you're gonna sell your your property's value is gonna go down, but you're gonna be making more money. Yeah, hey, like what? <laughs> I, what? I guess the only way that I can frame that thought is okay, so. In in this world where everyone pays six percent for commission, and you know, sometime in July there's going to be a cutoff, and no one's going to pay a buyer agent commission anymore. So every home seller is going to save three percent. Is the suggestion that prices are going to go down one to two percent? So then they just save one percent, or, or they make more? I don't. I don't. Yeah. I just I, don't I, get it. I think real estate has always been driven by supply and demand. I, I don't think the commission part will have an impact on, on home prices, it's, especially now that, that inventory is is still so tight, you know, and Massachusetts, it, it, it went down even more last week. So correct. Uh, it, it, it's wild, you know, like for people that are not actually looking at the data, they're just talking out of their, you know, what. And, um, and I, I think, you know, look, I'm all for change you know it, look it, if change is coming change is coming um if the department of justice wants it and it's coming because of this lawsuit hey it is what it is um but framing it as that you know the seller is going to wind up with more in their pocket because well, can, it just makes no sense it, you you could frame it that hey it's better for a seller because they're not going to be paying the party that's negotiating against them like I understand that. I get that argument. Yeah. I, okay. But but, but so so let, let's break it down, right? 
it was, you know, like it, it started with 6% being standard, which was not true, but I guess some states were worse than others. Missouri, I, I, I don't want to pick on. So I guess some states I... had, had it as a standard, but most deals that I've done here, even personally, I've never paid 6%. Well, you know, I think it's between four and five here in Mass, to, at least. And to, and to me, I think the issue is, you know, any agent that uses the word standard to begin with, right? Like, hey, if they want to go and charge 6%, 7%, 8%, they're free to do it. If the seller doesn't like that, great. Go interview someone else. Yep. Like, like they, they're perfectly capable of doing that, but you know that there's a lot of agents that do use the, well, it's standard to be X. And yep. that just isn't the case. It, it might be standard that they charge whatever they're charging. Um, so that boils my blood a little bit, that I think you have a whole bunch of people that just in the real estate industry don't present it correctly mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the seller. But, okay. Yeah, no, fair, fair enough. With with my agent, I've never had, you know, it's been up front. Hey, this gets split between buyers and sellers. I, I did, I do have some people DMing me saying that, hey, I've had to pay that standard 6%. It's true. So I, I see both sides of it. Now, the unintended consequences in this is, let's say you have a listing, you're charging 3%, right? And, 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 you know, like a, a buyer's agent has an agreement with their buyer to pay 2%. That is the first time buyer doing three and a half percent or 5% down. They don't have that extra 5,000 towards the, the buyer's agent commission. How are we going to work this out? Right. Sellers well, not going to pay for it. Correct. And that, that's why I wanted to ask you this, because I think there is this chit chat about, well, it could be a credit and, you know, put on the loan somehow. And I am not a savant with that stuff by any means. I can, can a, a commission even be put as a credit? I don't know. And if so, I think there's limits to that stuff. So maybe you can talk to oh, that yeah. a little bit. So there, there's the interested party contributions, right? Which could be paid by the seller, by the listing agent, buyer's agent, builder. Um, in, in, in those, so F, FHFA, which kind of like manages the rules of FHA loans and Fannie and Freddie follows along. They said that these commissions won't be treated as a, as a uh, interested party contribution, which is not a bad yeah. thing. Yeah. Now, will they allow it to be? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I've worked in the past where we've had agents charge an additional 1% to the buyer. I've had it happen. Sure. It's, it's listed on the CD or the loan estimate. Yep. And it gets paid by, I've had it be paid by the buyer, but I've never had it be paid by another party. Now, the, the problem is, I mean, I could... I could raise the interest rate on some deals and provide clients with a lender credit, but I don't have a guidance where, hey, this lender credit can can be offered to, uh, you know, in, in the form of, of, of the commission, you know. If, if, you, if you knew that someone was buying the house for 700,000, but it appraised for 720, mm -hmm. could you, you theoretically raise the sale price and roll it into the loan i mean all that would have to be done after you enter the exactly. and stuff. yeah it's it's legal to do yeah i yeah, mean so, but so that's it, just the roll of the dice you it, know who knows if that could ever come up it, exactly yeah. exactly and, and the seller would have to agree with it so i i don't know I, i'm my, it's, not, it's, my, certainly, it's certainly not going to be, oh, the lender is going to figure it out no, by any means. No, yeah. it, it, it's got to be everybody in the transaction. Um, my, my thought process is this. It's like if we start regulating industries on how much they should charge, like what's, what's next? You know, like someone that bought a car a few years ago now may be complaining I overpaid during COVID. So are we in a capitalist economy or sure <laughs> well and 
so that you make an interesting point here and where I always think this goes is, you know, you have the, the beauty and the, the pain of a commission thing is, yeah, high risk, high reward, right? Plenty of real estate agents and other commission gigs will work months, weeks, countless hours and get nothing. And yes, plenty of them, sure. Maybe it was just that one week that, you know, the sale happened to go on and forget all the rest of, you know, their career and their education and training. Fair enough. Yep. You know, that, that will happen from time to time. But if you want to adjust the way in which the industry operates to some fee-based model, to me, happy to go to a fee-based model, but that sounds like I get paid regardless of the outcome. Like, yep. you know, like, if you want to pay me a fee, that's fine. I'll come over. I'll look at your house. That's going to cost you something. I come over. I put the sign in the yard. That costs you something. I come over with the photographer and we take pictures. That's going to cost you something. Exactly. You know, hey, we didn't sell the house. Well, here's here's my hours. You know, you're going to owe me whatever. Like, I, you want to go there? That better? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And look, maybe right now in this market, depending on the exact person in the house and where it is, that might be better for them. But um, this market won't stay like this for forever. It's hard to Correct. say that right now. But. But, but but historically speaking, I don't think loan officers and real estate agents have been these like rich people, you know, like affluent. We're middle class folks, right? We're being- The top portrayed. 1%. <laughs> Like, but anything, right? Like, we're being portrayed as, like, yeah. I, I, I feel like real estate got sexy during, you know, selling sunset pandemic, right? People were in front of the TV. A lot of people got licensed as loan originators and agents. And now we're being portrayed on the media as we're like making this, like, you know, everyone closes half a million dollars, right? Uh, say hi to Melissa, by the way. Um, <laughs> I, I will. She doesn't hear us now, but it's okay. Uh, um, but I, I, I think that's the problem, right? And even the president of the United States, I don't want to make it political, but he addressed this as, hey, realtors, make sure you drop your commission. Like That was eye-opening. Like, like, I mean, he says what he's being, you know, instructed by his advisors and, you know, like what sounds good. I, to, to the public. Think, yeah, no, it looked that that was that was a low blow, right? I think that um, look, I I think if you're anyone out there in any industry, it's hard not to look at this and say, when are they going to come after the electricians? When are they going to come after the plumbers? When are they going to come after the auto mechanics? I mean, why, why do I have to pay my auto mechanic a hundred ten an hour? Exactly. What the hell? You I don't know, think like, it's fair now. Yeah. yeah. He should be 75. <laughs> the TikTok okay. comments, the TikTok comments are the best. You know, like I've had people say, hey, you know what? I'll pay my realtor 20 bucks an hour. <laughs> I mean, look, there's models out there that I think operate like that, too. I mean, you know, what's interesting is I find that as a consumer and I just, you know, consumers in general, right? Like, and I, I'll do this from time to time. I know that gas station that is going to be like a 20 minute round trip. I'll yep. save three, I'll save three cents a gallon. And for whatever reason on that day, I go and I make that trip yep. and you know, okay. So I saved 70 cents. <laughs> like, okay. But, and, and look, you go to buy a car, right? Yep. People will drive. 100, 150 miles to save $1,000, $1,500. Don't get me wrong. That's real money. Like, yep. I get it. Yeah. Was it, you probably have to make a couple trips to the dealer. What's that overall time? Okay. It, it might be worth it to some people. Um, and so I think there's always going to be a place where people do want to say, like, save that type of money. And, but, you know, I don't know. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I get it. No, but, but, Personally, I, I've always thought that real estate has always been negotiable, right? You didn't have to go with the agent charging 6%. You, but my understanding was always that the fee was split and it is to the benefit of the industry, right? Making people 
make it easier for buyers to buy their first home. Correct. It's been, it's been super clear from day one. To me. I feel what's interesting is that, it, you know, on the settlement statement, right? Okay. The mm -hmm. buyer agent commission comes out of the seller side. It, it could have easily just come out of the buyer. The buyer was putting all the money into the transaction. Yeah. From, from day yeah. one. I, I, the seller didn't have any profit without that. So we, you, we could have just moved that over to the buyer side at any time. I, it did, yep. it, yeah. It, it's curious to me. And I think that, you know, getting to dictate what's, um, what anyone charges is really interesting because, you know, I think of anything as negotiable, right? The plumber comes to me and says, hey, we're going to redo your bathroom. It's going to be $15,000 for the plumbing work. What's stopping me from saying, exactly. hey, can, you do, can you do better? Or picking up the phone and calling another plumber. Because um, I've done that before. I love my plumber. But if, it's, if I think it's like crazy, I'm going to call another plumber. I, for, for some reason in real estate, and I tell people when I'm interviewing them, I say, you should go and talk with another real estate agent. Even yep. if I think we're getting along great, I say, go and interview with three of them. They should. And, and, there, and there are discount brokerages. You know, I, I know a few. Yeah. Most, most people don't use them. Why? Because their reach, their marketing is not the same. What they do for you is no offense to them. I, they're very respectable people working for them, but, but it, it, it makes sense, right? You're going to put a lot of effort into something that you're getting paid for. If totally it's what is worth your time, right? Yep. Um, you know, it's crazy. How, you know what's crazy? I mean, getting outside of Boston and probably the 128 belt, and certainly at at least the median price, average price in the state, um, it's crazy to me the amount of real estate agents that still don't have professional photography. Whether they're paying for it or the seller's paying for it, I do look at it and I go, okay, wait a minute. The house is a $600,000 house. Like You couldn't have got a professional photographer in here exactly so so in some senses there's a couple times where i i hear the comments and i'm like hey like some of it's valid but that but it is curious how a lot of people are you know look everyone everyone loves to kick a horse that's down and you know i get it that there's there's plenty of bad agents out there and people want to slam that and i get it that people can have bad experiences the same as you can have a bad experience with a doctor with a restaurant with a uh, car mechanic, it, it all runs the gamut. Yep. And I think guys like you that have been in the industry know what you're doing, have the confidence to, you know, have a seller conversation or buyer conversation that, hey, this is what you're getting. This is what I'm offering to you. You're going to do much better. And the younger ones with no experience, unfortunately, they're going to have a tougher time personally during this market. You're correct about that. But there's also a whole host of people who have been in this industry for a long time that have always just gone, hey, here's the contract and not gone through it True. for people. So I hear I hear those people also complaining, you know, they don't know how to explain a contract to their client. They just assume the client's going to just sign it. And I get it that 90 percent of the time that's what happens. But to not walk through a seller with the contract, the buyer with the contract is wild to me. Yep. So they might be on the way out too. Yep. No, for sure. I mean, it's kind of like on, on our in, in our industry as a loan officer, like I'll provide the lowest rate with no points. And then, you know, like people will get, I'll, I'll quote people if they want to pay points to buy down the rate, right? And there's many times where you have rate shoppers. I'm like, okay, do you want to know what the rate is with no points? Points. They're like, okay, no points. So they'll go to another lender, they'll get a quarter percent less, right? And then the moment that they're locked in, they get the loan estimate and all of a sudden they're paying three grand in points. Boom. It, and it, it's like, I kind of told you so, I'm like, com always compare apples to, but how is the client going to know if there's a shitty loan officer not doing the, right, not doing the right thing? They, look, uh, they're you not know? going to. They're not going to. Um, so it's it's it's, it's difficult. It, it so we we gotta hold ourselves to a higher standard. You know, I mean, competition is tough right now. You know, like there's there's so much business going around, but you, you gotta do the right thing.
And look, you know, the real estate industry is supposed to be self-reporting, self-regulating, which I think uh, got to the point where it wasn't doing that. And had there been more of that, maybe it wouldn't be in this position. So, but wasn't the NAR kind of like the, I always saw the NAR as like the authority overseeing realtors. I mean, uh, it, it, it was, right. I think part of the issue was you could, you could report something and, you know, it goes to mediation. And I think, I think, it, I think it had to be a real, real, like hardcore criminal. Like they're not in the business of taking away licenses. They True. just aren't. I mean, it's a violation, you know, a, a fee, a fine, uh, you know, but. So what do you think happens to the NAR next? Like what, what, because a lot of realtors still back them, you know, they, they, I, I well, hear a lot of people still like them, so you know, like, I, I do think that I wouldn't say like, um, from my standpoint, I think that that organization does is good for the American homeowner in the sense that the lobbying efforts that they do to protect equity in homes in general okay. is pretty good. And sometimes the legislation that they thwart um, will will help, you know, property values. Um, yep. So I think that there is definitely a lot of good that's done through their lobbying efforts, even if it's not the lobbying efforts of what is passed legislation wise. And that a lot of that is on the local and the state level, not necessarily the national level, um, yep. but it gets funding from the national level. I think, I think they, they're at a very, very tough position right now. I think that um, everyone in their leadership camp and even the new, there's been so much turnover the last year or so, like they need, yep. they need, they need to refigure it out. They need to, they need to figure out communication with their members they need to uh, realign their focus in terms of what they do and they're going to have a tough time i think keeping their membership pricing where it is which i think might really destroy it as well too because if they what is these, it now it, it's probably uh, no but i i think it's probably like 600 ish or so um and it, don't quote me on that yeah, but yeah. It's, it's not it's, it's not it's, crazy no, it's not crazy. Um, but, but do you think they're going to up the price to pay for that, that settlement? Or <laughs> who's going to pay I, for it? <laughs> well, I, I think they, look, even if they have the money, which I don't know if they do, um, they're going to probably have to up prices just to keep whatever they're doing now, you know, moving forward. So that's going to be an issue. Um, because then if they if they can't do what they're doing now lobbying wise you yeah. know i think they lose all value um i think that they make very poor choices with their marketing efforts to consumers as well too i think the advertisements i've seen for you know realtor it's you can you can do something better i've, I've seen a couple of them yeah yeah, yeah. You, just, you you can do something more catchy or more the, engaging the, yeah, <laughs> to the and, audience. The, and the fact that, you know, they sort of have, you know, look, Zillow's a brokerage at this point, right? Like, and yep. so, so they have to kind of like, Zillow's part of them, like, if you will, like, but Zillow also, I think to the consumer is like, there's Zillow and there's the realtors. It's so like, the yep. fact that they've let that narrative become a thing. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, and then, I don't know. I, th I think there should be another organization that comes around if it even comes around. Um, but maybe just fractures and splits. And, you know, ultimately this could be something where it's a real culling of the herd yeah. of, you know, agents, which would not be a bad thing. The, the CEO of the brokerage, the agency, I think they're planning on starting something competing Great. with the real, uh, with NAR. So we'll, we'll see, but I, I don't know. I, I think there's got to be like a, an organization, you know, like, uh, like the NAR. It, it's important. Does the lobbying effort, like you said. Yeah. And it's, and I think that look, you know, that's not a sexy thing. I think it's a thing that a lot of um, agents, I, 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 you know, ask me, you know, I'm 16 years into this thing. Ask me even four, four years ago, if I thought that was like a big deal, I probably would have said no. So, you know, I think there's a ton of real estate agents that 
they have no clue what they even do and you know what why that's important and maybe it won't be important to people um no time like the present to start a competing one i don't know that guy or girl enough to speak to them um my feeling is it probably has to be someone that's pretty ubiquitous in the industry True. to really take hold but if they have a good enough vision for it um yeah it, it might not matter yeah how are you preparing for the changes? Not to put you on the spot, but what no, the changes are are coming up in July or? Well, you, we'll see, right? I mean, the the DOJ hasn't yeah. even signed off on this, so like that's the other thing, right? It's like, are the are they, is it even going to come in July? Is what's proposed going to be what passes? We'll see. Um, I think from from our perspective, we're retooling how we present, uh, just you know, to a seller, to a buyer, the conversation that we have about commission. Um, yep. I think so. So our buyer and seller presentations are going to look different for sure. Um, I think that the conversation around just in terms of what we do and value add is going to be different. And I think that we're probably going to, we've played with this in the past where we have offered out, hey, for 3%, we we do this for four percent we do this for 20 percent. we do this um so i think they were probably going to move more to huh. that realm of things okay where yeah uh, like more options more options yeah or less options you know? yeah right um, <laughs> which and look it might even be uh, something where hey look you find the buyer and you just want us to you know help you and make sure the process goes smoothly one percent you know, if they have a neighbor that's wanting to sign up and buy the place and they just want to make sure they're getting a fair deal, great. We can help you with that too. Yeah. Um, so I think I think we're going to probably re-examine that type of thing as well too. That's cool. That's that's a different perspective from, from others that I've seen before, you know. Like, it's not like you're becoming a discount brokerage, but you're saying, hey, we got options for you. So, yeah, and I, and, awesome. you know, from what I've looked at from people who or other companies, other industries that have offered that stuff, you know, you, you have the, the platinum, the gold, the silver, right? I think that right. in, gen, in general, you know, the statistics show 80%, 90% of the time, they're taking probably the middle one anyways. Um, sure. So, which, you know, look around here, I think we're being squeezed on commissions anyways, you know, just because of how many real estate agents we have and how tight the market is. Yep. So it could be something where if someone's choosing the middle one, it's above what, uh, you know, we're getting squeezed to at this point. So, yeah, no, I think that's a very good approach. I mean, the headlines are real estate agents are going to charge less, blah, blah, you know, like, so you have two ends of the spectrum. Some realtors saying I'm not changing crap. Some other one, you know, the headline saying that, oh, we're, everyone's going to be paying less now. But kind of like somewhere in the middle, what you're saying sounds very reasonable where, where the industry may end up. With. I mean, it would cer certainly look, it would be stupid of me to say I'm never going to change crap. Um, in the, in, just in the sense that, you know, I don't get to determine if I'm going to hire myself, right? Like, it's, yep. it's the consumers that I'm facing. So... Hey, if, if 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 everything passes and for four months after that, you know, every single appointment I've gone on, everyone is saying, sorry, we're only going to do this for, you know, 20 bucks and a bag of McDonald's nuggets. Like, I'm going to have to figure something out. Um, you, so, you know, and so will the other real estate agents that say I'm not changing anything. So um, on the buyer's agent side, are you being more tough with, signing uh, an upfront agreement so we've everybody? signed agreements i would say for the last two years we've always had agreements in place but i think that they're going to be it's going to be different in the sense that we've used them sort of as one we want someone to sign it just to make sure that they're ready and they want to work with us yep. we have a very very easy opt out, opt out clause which i think will probably remain in there um in the sense that hey you don't want to work with us give us, I think it's like five business days notice and, you know, in writing. Cool. Um, but, you know, we sort of defaulted to the, hey, you're going to owe us 
X, but we will seek from the seller and, you know, if the seller is giving, you know, something else, you know, we'll just end up taking it. Um, so that language is going to have to change. And we've definitely, ta- I mean, look, presented one to, to uh, some investor clients last week. They got one under agreement. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I even told them, I said, look, nothing's changed, but we do have to have these agreements in place. Um, I don't foresee you guys paying a commission yet. He asked me yesterday, hey, just want to make sure how much money to move around here. Are, are you getting paid from the seller or from us? So that, that, it, was, <laughs> it was great to know he was willing Good. to sell it out. Um, and I wanted to tell him, like, well, you are buying the place, remember? Um, so it's all coming from you. But so, you know, look, people are either going to be okay with it or they're not. Um, yep. You know, I, and I think... I'm hoping that the regulations will allow us to have us pursue the commission through the sale price still, even if a seller, you know, can't advertise it or whatever. Um, and if that's not the case, we'll see. Yep. Yep. What I'm hoping happens, because here, here's what's interesting to me. I understand the concept that, okay, we sign a buyer agency agreement and you agree to pay 6%, but the seller's giving out 10, well, that extra 4% I can't keep. Got it. So I have to rebate that or whatever. It sounds like they're saying. Yep. What's curious to me is if we sign for 10%, I should be able to, and I would imagine that you would want to, we find a property and, you know, either the seller's giving less and I choose to take less or I just – Hey, I want to be done with this guy as a client. Like, I'm just going to take less, just to, like get him out. Like, let let's get him in the home and like get out of here. I hope that we can do that. Where if we sign at whatever percentage, we can take less. I've heard that that might not be a thing either, which is very curious to me. Hmm. Why wouldn't that be like not to allow it to make changes either? I would think that's just renegotiating with your client. Correct. Correct. And I mean, if, if, not going up, but... if, if the language is there now, l- let me ask you this. So there can be no language about commissions on the MLS or from, from everything that I've heard, nothing on the MLS. Wow. Maybe, maybe it can be something like, uh, you know, seller is willing to give closing cost credits. But you can't say that the closing cost credits are for commissions. I mean, th- that seems like it would defeat what they're looking to do here, which is really decouple. The, so I don't. That's why I don't think that's going to yeah. remain. Well, you decouple it, but you now it's more work for you to find out what the commission is for each property that you're going to show. Not that not that it matters, but it may matter for your buyer. I'm hoping that most buyers and their agents take the position of, look, we're just going to submit the offer and, <laughs> and tell them, hey, you're going to, here's, here's 700,000 and you're going to pay 1%, 2%, 10%, whatever the hell it is. Like I, F, F around them, find out. Yeah. Type of I mean, thing. I, I, cause, cause it sounds like everyone is saying, well, you can advertise on social media or via email or phone call. And it's just, I don't know, man. It's, that seems defeated too. Like, unless they just really want the MLS to go away, which that doesn't but, seem to be. But is it that, in my opinion, the commission being on MLS was transparent. Now people are going to do shady stuff. Well, I guess, I guess because the consumer couldn't see it was... Uh, Okay, 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 okay. Which, that's really ridiculous. I mean, the, like that, the, I think that should have always been able to be seen. Um, sure. But yes, now... But that, that's now, a small fix. That, that could have been a small fix, yeah. Easily. And, and I do, and look, to me, that would be better. And I also think... I think it's more transparent than anything. Yes, and how can, how can you sit there and tell a seller, hey, you can't offer compensation because i get it that look sellers should have the option they don't want to offer compensation don't totally fine like they'll figure out if that's good and that's going to work or not but but if you're a developer with 300 new homes like (laughs) i 
and look, fine, lower your prices. I don't know, but like, if they want to use that as one of the tools in their tool bag to, you know, get people there, because look, they could offer out a 5% commission to a buyer agent. You know, so in, again, is that going to get someone to stroke a check? Maybe not, but maybe the buyer agent, you know, somehow, you know, gives some sort of a rebate or I don't know, like, there's, but it yeah. seems crazy to take away that from a homeowner. It, it, it's going to be even tougher to regulate with, you know, like side agreements happening and nobody seeing them versus on, on MLS, it was like right there, at least you had the knowledge of it and sharing it with your buyers or sellers. But now I, f I feel like now it's going to be all, I, I feel right, like right, it's all, like, all, all going to get settled on the PNS. No one's going to show their initial agreements to the lender and to the attorneys. That's going to be too complicated. I, I'm damn sure you could have two brokers in town or brokerages that, you know, hey, you know, Bob, like, you know, hey, any, anything that we list, like, you guys will get one no matter what. You know? <laughs> Just <laughs> wink, wink, wink. <laughs> it, it's it's gonna be a, a shit show. Excuse my language, but it, it, and, and I think other industries should be very, very worried if if this becomes a hey, you cannot charge this much. You only got to charge it, or you're overpricing. Like what happened to like biopharma companies, right? charging a thousand percent more than what they you know what their margins are like, we didn't give it we didn't we didn't donate enough to <laughs> political causes yeah, right it, it, exactly exactly yeah. you know i was re i was reading a, a tweet or do you call them tweets still or do you call them x yeah i don't know tweet. Right. I, I still say tweets but so this guy uh chris smith so he's like a marketer in like the real estate space but he's not an agent he's like a marketing company he tweeted where is it here the idea that consumers didn't know commissions were negotiable it's hogwash if that were true then why have agents constantly been asked that they will lower the commission for decades <laughs> he makes a, he, make, he makes a good point there he does he does um like, we're, we're, we're going to be in a position where they may try it out and then they may have to go back. If, if a, a, a set of lawsuits start, because you're going to have other hungry attorneys like these guys that stand to benefit probably 100 million or so. That represent if, VA buyers, FHA buyers. Right. But in other industries, too, that are going to be like, hey, maybe I can do this in my industry and I could win because my industry is making so much profits right so and and, and that's where somebody is going to step in and say hey you know what we messed up let, let, let's backtrack here how much how much profit are they making and why are they are they allowed to make dollars <laughs> exactly I, I, no one no one told me they were making 80 cents on this can that's ridiculous so it's so I think we're opening up a can of worms here that that it I, I don't know it, it it's gonna yeah it's gonna I, them back. I I think there's ways to deal with um, transparency from the agent to the consumer more than if better than what they're trying to do with this yeah I think yeah Chantel puts a nice comment here I don't see anybody putting price regulations on cell phones yeah or the damn plans that go with them yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right? Yep. My yep. Verizon bill is like two fifty a month. We have two fucking phones. Yep. Yep. And you're locked in for what, three years now on an iPhone? Probably. Oh, oh man, yeah. is that what I, it is now? I think it's thirty six yeah, yeah. It's you're paying it for thirty six months. Yeah. So, I, and you I'm, know, I mean I have AT and your electric bill and you know there's like um what is they someone someone wanted to sue Apple for antitrust recently too? Yeah, right. Like yeah, yeah. The the DOJ, yeah, the Department of Justice, yeah. Like, I mean, they they want to break it up. I think you know. So, like like, don't they understand people at least like Apple? <laughs> I mean, they they have a superior product. So, I mean, sorry, Samsung, Android. You know, like you got to step it up. I mean. 
go go to Dunkin' Donuts first or something. I don't know. Like, good lord. Uh, hey, this was great. Good. This you was won't. good. This, this was. Oh uh, yeah, you're. Right. I'm gonna start telling my attorney it's only ten percent <laughs> payout to them. Yeah, yeah. Tell that to Melissa. All, <laughs> only when the judgment goes in your favor, right? Yeah. Like, like, if, like if they don't win, forget it. Oh man. Hey, this was great. Thank you. I, I think it we we covered a lot. It was very interesting conversation. Yeah, we should do this we'll, uh, again in the future too. Yeah, absolutely. We will. And let's meet. You know, I know yeah, you don't this, like doing lunches great. and stuff. Yeah, whatever. Should I I'll should I send you a gift card so you can <laughs> gift your partner? <laughs> it's, it's good. It's good. <laughs> I'll, I'll send all the the cases of wine and you know. Just make sure the DOJ's listening. <laughs> hey, this was awesome. Um, Thank you. You're great. Keep up the good work. Um, love you what too. you're posting. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying, you know. Um, with three kids, you know how it is. So, God bless you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Andy, yeah, you too. You're, 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 hand, you're hand strung a little bit more than I am in terms of the things that you guys can, you know, uh, market and stuff too, which is hard. So yeah. they, yep. they cut you guys off the knees back in what, 2010-ish? Yeah, 2010. Um, as long as you're not advertising rates, it, it, it's fine. You know, like you can, once you start quoting rates, that, that's where all the disclaimers have to come in. So. Got it. But I'm always careful, you know. Like, yep. No, of course. Um, yeah. Which, but that's also crazy because, like, what's the one thing a consumer wants to know? What's the rate? Which I know is a tough <laughs> conversation because it's not just like, hey, well, today it's three dollars, and so, you know, it, there's so much that goes into exactly. that. So, exactly. Um, Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye, Thanks, everyone. Patrick. Take care. Thank you, guys.